All right, guys. So this is the last full trading week for the year of 2018. Um, now, I said I wasn't going to do a weekly outlook for this week just because I'm not interested in trading anything and I'm still not interested in getting into any new trades. I'm going to go over a couple pairs that I am interested in getting into um, in the first week or two of January. But I did just want to keep the momentum. I decided to get on here today and still at least just do kind of a yearly recap, um, kind of give you guys my game plan for 2019. And I apologize that this is just a recording. Um, if you were trying to watch the stream about 30 minutes ago when I tried to stream, uh, for whatever reason, since I got back from Thailand, um, I was in Thailand for two months. And since I got back yesterday, um, my internet has been acting up a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it because actually in a couple days here, I am relocating from Los Angeles to Arizona. I'm going to be moving to Phoenix, Arizona. I'm really excited. Just a new place, new change, new environment for me to be in. I've never lived in Phoenix my entire life. Um, and I'm just kind of excited to see where it takes me. There's a lot of um, good opportunities out there for myself for this year. And I'm excited to just bring you guys more value and really just 10x what we've done in 2018. Because quite honestly, 2018 has been amazing. So just to kind of, just to recap 2018, um, and before we get started, if you're watching this, guys, please do me a favor and smash the like button below. It really helps out my channel. I'm really working on growing this, and um, of course, the more people that are liking it, um, I know that you guys like this content, and I can produce even more of it, and it just motivates me to make higher quality content for you guys. Um, also make sure you're subscribed and you press the bell to get notifications. So that way, anytime I post a video, um, you're getting some good free value for yourself. But um, I also want to thank each and every single one, each and every single one of you guys that have been following me that have been following um, my journey over the past couple of years. Um, so for some of you guys that know me personally, or have been following me for a long time, you guys know that my Forex journey is um, five years old now. We're going on almost six years of this Forex journey, um, but I didn't really bring it into social media and uh, start my business until about three years ago when I first started Positive Traders at the beginning of 2016 or near the beginning of 2016. So for those of you guys that have been following me um, in the Positive Traders journey, for the past couple of years, or even if you've only been following me for a month or a couple of weeks or even a couple of days, you know, thank you for um, your support. And it really motivates me to, to, you know, provide quality content for you guys. It's really awesome to see what I've been able to build just through the power of Instagram and Facebook and Telegram and YouTube. And it's really cool. Um, and I'm really excited to just, um, like I said, 10 X what we did in 2018, but um, just to kind of recap 2018, we are finishing off the year extremely strong. Um, we are closing the, the month of December with over a little bit over 6% returns. And I'm so excited for 2019. I know for a fact that 2019 is going to be our best year. It's going to be my best trading year. I hope it's your best trading year. Um, and that's the way it should be, right? Every year you should get progressively better and better at trading. Um, and I think definitely this year I've seen the most improvement in my own personal trading, um, just even within the past couple months, really, um, the end of quarter three throughout all of quarter four, I've done a lot of massive improvements with, um, how I trade and, um, how I find my trades. And, uh, it, it, there's always like a underlying strategy that I use, but I think it's good for every couple of months to kind of tweak and adjust your strategy because really at the end of the day, that's, that's what trading is about is staying up to date with everything. I truly don't believe that one strategy will, if you just trade one specific way that it's not going to work for a lifetime of trading. I think that, um, a couple times a year or depending on how you trade in your trading style every couple of years, I think you need to kind of tweak your trading strategy and make sure um, that it's the best it can be. And that's something that I've definitely worked on over the past six months or so with my own trading. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. 
Um, again, just to set a tone for this webinar, this is more of going to be kind of like a recap and also looking at some trades that I'm interested in for the uh, for the ne for next year. There is no trades that I'm in. I'm, I'm not trading at all this week, guys. We are done. So if you are one of the 300 plus students of mine and you're interested in what we're trading this week, well, I made it very, very clear um, last week and the week before last and also specifically last week on every single daily webinar that, that I did um, that we are not doing any trading whatsoever this week. We're taking it easy. We're done. Um, and for those of you guys that are wondering about my course, um, we have about one week left until the course drops. So originally it was supposed to be done by December 1st. Um, I didn't have it done by December 1st and just with my travels in Thailand, I didn't have a way to finish them while I was out there. Just had my schedule booked with other things that were pre-scheduled. Um, so I'm taking the next week to, I already, I've already, already been working on them today and working over the next week to finish um, the last couple videos that I have to shoot for you guys. And then from there also plugging it into my website and plugging it into teachable and getting everything all coordinated and, and getting it out there for all of you guys. So um, expect by new year's, the course to be completely done and finally up. I'm so excited. It's been um, over two months in the making and I've put a lot of time. I put a lot of my heart and soul into this and really making it the best course that I can make. And I know, that there's a lot of people out there that give crap to people that sell courses on Forex. And I will say a lot of that crap is justified. There are a lot of Forex educators out there that don't know what they're teaching. You know, they'll, they'll have an entire Forex course, but you ask them for some sort of results or for some sort of track record and they have nothing to prove. But, um, I even posted a Facebook status a little bit earlier about this today. Today, if you guys follow me on Facebook and I said something along the lines of that, I truly believe that if you have a track record, if you can prove that you're doing something properly, and if you can prove your consistency with anything, whether that be, um, you know, investing in uh, the stock market, investing in foreign exchange market, investing in real estate, investing in cryptocurrency, whatever you're going to invest in, whether it's like finance or even if it's not finance, just something that you're good at, period, in life that you can show you have results doing why not monetize that, right? Why not have that extra source of income? Um, and one really good example that I think of uh, that comes to the top of my head is somebody like Grant Cardone. Now, I know some people have mixed feelings about him, but regardless, at the end of the day, the, day, the facts are Grant Cardone owns a company that um, works, that handles hundreds of millions of dollars, right? He manages investments for properties. He's also had a lot of his own personal success in real estate investing, among other things. And even though he makes all this money with real estate investing and does all this stuff, he still monetizes the knowledge that he has through a course. And so I think it's wrong to accuse somebody and calling somebody like slimy for monetizing um, something that knowledge that they have. So I just kind of wanted to get that off of my chest a little bit that, yeah, it would be one thing if I was selling a course, um, where I didn't have a, my effects book, I didn't have a track record. I didn't have proof of profitability, but I do have that. And not only that, but I've also been running positive traders for almost three years now and never had a course or any education that I've sold. Right. So I've made a living for the past, actually past three years of my life have been full-time trading, completely full-time. Um, I've been in the Forex space for five years, but only three years, I've, or for three of those five years, I've been trading full-time, right? I took one year blowing accounts, going in circles like most people do, another year actually taking it seriously, learning and making a pretty decent income with it, but not a full-time income. I was still working a part-time job. And then after that year of doing it part-time, I left my job and went full-time trading. And that's where I've been for the past three years of my life. And I started Positive Traders um, one year after going full-time trading. So I'm um, pretty exciting uh, with what I've built. And I'm just kind of excited to see where things go. So my main focus for 2019 is going to be... Um, managing funds and man working with all of my investors with my mam account and my trade copier 
And um, that's my biggest, my biggest um, focus is growing clients, more high net worth clients, right? I'd like less of, you know, the smaller accounts, which I'm still going to serve smaller accounts, right? As long as you have $2,000 in your trade copy your account, your account can copy my trades and we split profits 35%. You get to keep 65% of the profits and we work that way. But my main goal is of course working with higher net individual individuals. So my goals is to get, um, you know, some clients that want to throw, you know, multiple seven figures into what I'm doing or high six figures in, into what I'm doing. And uh, my goal is by the end of 2019 to be managing eight figures. Um, you know, whether that be low eight figures or high eight figures, wherever it is, just at least eight figures period. That's what I would like to be managing um, between the firm that I work for and all of the personal clients that I've gained. And then of course, I'm going to have my course out there running as well, but that's going to just kind of be automated. I'm going to have a team doing ads and doing all the marketing side. So I'm not really going to have to focus any time on that. Um, my time put into the course was the past is the, has been the past two months of working on this course for you guys. So, um, for me, that's kind of a one and done thing. However, I do plan on making updates to the course as well. So not to keep dragging on information about that, but it's, I, I don't plan on it just being these 70 lessons that I've built and then it just being that and done. Of course, I'm going to make changes to it as my trading gets better and as different things progress in my trading in the future, I'll make those updates and everybody that is, um, that has purchased my course will get all of those updates as well. Um, and the course is going to be very affordable, right? Um, I think I've, I've told you guys the price before, but I'm not charging thousands of dollars. I'm not even charging $1,000. I'm not even charging half of a thousand dollars. The price of my course is going to be two ninety nine. So very very affordable. I obviously am not going to make this information free. I'm not just going to spend, I think I give enough free value between the telegram and my YouTube channel. I think there's plenty of free value for you to learn. And this is really for those people that want to get as much information as they can, um, but not have to pay an arm and a leg. So I know like other Forex MLMs out there, not to put any names out there, but you guys know other Forex MLMs they'll charge $2.99 for one month, right? Or two months of being with them. Whereas this is going to be, um, my course is going to be for, you get lifetime access to my course, right? It's never, I'm never going to like cut you off to the, the access to the information that is included in it. So pretty exciting. But that's enough about my course guys. Let's just kind of get into a couple setups that I'm looking for, for 2019. Um, first and foremost, I know I'm not doing any trading this week, but I still just want to review the economic calendar. I'm also going to talk about the U.S. government shutdown that happened yesterday. This is the second day that the government has been shut down, and then um, we'll get into the charts. But this is one of the reasons why the, the trading week is over for me, guys, is, I mean, let's just look at the calendar, right? Tuesday is Christmas, okay? Also, first and foremost, Merry Christmas, everybody. Also, I forgot to say my disclaimer that any information you guys hear on here is for informational and educational purposes only. This is not financial advice and don't take it as such. Um, but uh, as of right now, now that I'm back in the US, it is December 23rd, so it's a couple days before Christmas. So I know everybody's spending time with their families and everybody's doing things um, with their families, which is great. Spend some time with your family and that's another reason why we aren't trading. But the main reason we aren't trading is not just because banks are closed, not because there's not a lot of news on the economic calendar, but because liquidity in the market is pretty much gone. I don't expect markets to really even move much this week, right? All the institutions and commercial traders that actually move the market, um, big money, if you will, or smart money, how, whatever you want to call it, the people that actually move the markets, they aren't trading this week, right? They're done for the year. Um, we really aren't going to see liquidity back in the market until like the first and second week of January. And then we'll be back into a normal trading year. But, um, this week we can see lots of bank holidays, Christmas on the 25th, uh, the day after Christmas banks are closed still as well. Um, or at least a majority of banks are closed as well. U S banks are reopened the next day, but a lot of other banks are still closed on the 26th. And then we have a couple days. We have Thursday and Friday. Um, that the markets are open, no high impact news. And then next week, I'll still do a weekly outlook as well. But next week, then we'll have New Year's coming up and New Year's Eve where, where banks will be closed once again. So again, the next week and a half is pretty light. Like I, if you guys want my honest personal opinion, like don't take any trades, just be done, right? I know it's exciting to be in the markets and 
But just because the markets are open and you have the ability to be in the market doesn't mean you have to be in the market, right? Just be on the sidelines, wait until next year. Biggest thing that I can say is review your year, right? Look at your year as a whole, you know, break it down if you want to by quarters or months if you really want to. And look at where you can improve, you know, look at where your strongest months are. I'll tell you for me personally, my strongest months are always in the middle of the year. Um, generally it tends to be June, July, or August that I have my strongest trading months. Um, and that's been shown on my track record. Uh, for example, this year, my strongest trading month was July. We did a little bit under 15% returns in July and that's huge. You know, I know some of you guys think like hearing that, Oh, only 15%, you know, I did a hundred percent last week. Okay. Yeah. You did a hundred percent on your couple hundred dollar account or your couple thousand dollar account. But I guarantee you right now that if I gave you a million dollars to trade with that, you probably wouldn't think 15% returns was small returns, right? 15% returns on a million dollar account is $150,000. So it's very, very, very big returns when you kind of look at the bigger picture of it and you don't just think about it from a perspective of a thousand dollar account or a couple hundred dollar account. So um, kind of important to have that perspective when it comes to trading, because to be quite honest, none of you guys should really, I mean, unless you have a hundred thousand dollars of your own personal money ready to go and ready to trade, right? All of your goal, your goal should be to get to a point where you're able to leverage other people's money to build your own personal income. That's the way I've made a huge portion of my income guys is leveraging other people's money. Um, over the past two, well, I actually started managing accounts at, in, at the beginning of, or end of 2016, early to beginning of 2017. And at the beginning of 2017, that's when I started um, being able to acquire clients and leverage those clients by um, using profit share, right? A client puts in, let's say, $100,000 into my trade copier, and I get to keep 35% of the profits that I make for them. Well, you can build you can provide an income or build an income very, very quickly um, by leverage. And that's just like one client, right? We're talking about, you know, when I very first started, I think even on the first day that I started doing trade copier, the trade copier, I had, I don't know, somewhere between like 30 and 50 clients already, 30 and 50 people that already were willing to put money into the trade copier. And that's because I had a year before that of showing profitability through my group and online and with my signals group and all that. So I had built that trust there. And um, that's the big thing guys is you need to be able to build trust. You should be able to document your results and be able to publicly display those results. And as you do that, um, you're going to gain more and more of those high profile net worth clients that you're looking for, right? Those clients that are willing to give you high five figures, multiple six figures, even seven figures for you to manage for them. Um, and that, that should, I mean, I believe that that should be most people's goals, right? If you're, if you're like the average person, you know, working a nine to five where you don't have a ton of money that you can put towards trading and you might be asking yourself, well, I understand that 15% or 5% or 3% a month is a lot with big money, but on my hundred dollar account or my $1,000 account, that's not enough to live off of. Right. And so if you're, if you fit into that category, well then focus on being consistent and having results that you can publicize. So that way you can gain these types of clients. Like I've been able to gain over the past two years and then be able to leverage your net worth. Right. And then you get approached by firms. Like I got approached by a firm actually at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And, um, through that firm, now I've been able to manage private equity, large, large amounts of private equity, um, on top of the clients that I've acquired. Right. And then I have my own personal trading account. So there's so many different avenues of income, uh, just by leveraging your skills. So that's the beauty of it. But anyways, enough about me. Let's go ahead and, and talk about the, the charts. Okay. So, um, let's look at the dollar index, right? Let's kind of see where the dollar is. Let's also very quickly talk about the government shutdown for So those of you guys that are not super familiar, um, or aware with what's going on in the U S the U S government has partially shut down. It's not like a full shutdown. Um, I'll talk about what I mean by that in just a second, but it's the third government shutdown this year. So, um, it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy. There's been three government shutdowns in 2018. Some of you guys might not even know that there were 
um, two other government shutdowns this year. Uh, the first one was early this year and it was shut down for a couple weeks, like two weeks. And then there was another government shutdown a couple months later, um, still earlier this year. And um, that was actually a lot longer. That was like six weeks. And then this government shutdown, it shut down yesterday. It was just a partial shutdown. So what I mean by that is um, things like the post office are still open. Um, things like uh, TSA. So when you go to like the airport, TSA is still working. Those are federal employees. But um, uh, besides that, how, oh, about half a million uh, federal employees are, they're working right now, but they're working without pay. Um, and then there's other, a couple of hundred other thousand government employees that are working or that are furloughed. So kind of interesting spot. And if you guys don't know why the government shuts it down, it's basically when the president and the Congress disagree with each other. And right now, and before I say anything and get into like the political side of things, let me just be clear. And I've said this again, I've said, I've said this before, and I'll say this again, that I am a bipartisan or I'm bipartisan. So I am not a Democrat. I am not a Republican. I don't identify with either political party. Um, I, because there's things with either sides that I agree with and disagree with. I'm just, whatever is good for the people and whatever is good for the economy as a whole and whatever is just good for everybody is kind of what I go for, which I know that's hard to be right. You usually one side is, you know, has something that is opposing the other side. So that's why I'm bipartisan. So yeah, I'm not a, a for one or the other before I say anything that I'm about to say. Um, so right now, and you guys might have also seen this in the news, I see posts all over Facebook with this, but pretty much um, President Trump wants to get $5 billion that um, he, he wants $5 billion that he can build a wall with. Um, and you guys know the wall, We've, it's been talked about, I'm, there's been memes about it, everybody knows what the wall is. So he wants $5 billion to build the wall and Congress doesn't agree with it. So there's a disagreement, and basically it, and I guess I kind of, I retract the statement that I said a moment ago, guys. Uh, it's not necessarily when they disagree just on anything. It's when the president and Congress disagree on the budget on federal government spending. And so this is part of the budget and they've disagreed on it. So, um, Congress isn't for it, but obviously president Trump is so, uh, the government has been shut down until they reach an agreement and uh, we have no idea how long it will last. Okay. So it could last six weeks. It could last six months, right? We, we obviously, if it lasts six months, that's going to be very bad, but um, you know, overall, and, and just to kind of give you an example, guys, like we've seen the government shut down this year twice, but we've seen the dollar rally as well. So I don't want you to think necessarily that it has a direct correlation to what happens to the US dollar. It doesn't just mean, oh, the US government is shut down short the dollar. It doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, we're gonna look at other factors of why the dollar index could move lower. But um, yeah, so just to kind of segue into the charts and, and move away from that, I just kind of wanted to give you guys, those of you that didn't know, some education on what's going on in the US right now, and that there's not necessarily a time frame or a specific date that the government is supposed to be reopened. Um, but to get into, uh, there's a couple of setups that I marked off. I marked them off with these red, um, with these red tabs. So we're going to look at, look at them. First thing is the dollar index. So dollar index has been pretty tricky, uh, recently. Um, and just to kind of recap where we're at, this is the weekly time frame on the dollar index. We've been largely bullish and a large uptrend since April of this year. Um, all of 2017, you can see, so beginning at the end of 2016, we can see that there's a, there's been a major, there was a major sell off throughout all of 2017, um, even into 2018, right? Really into, we can see that until about end of January is when the markets kind of started to consolidate. And then from the end of January of this year until about early April or middle of April, we saw the dollar index just sideways for, so that's almost three, like three, almost four months that the markets were just sideways on the dollar index. And then finally, at the end of April, we saw some direction in the market and that was the upside. And that's the trend that we've been in since. So I'm going to zoom in some ways and just to recap my bias where I've been at. So for um, a little bit over a month now, almost two months, 
I was looking for originally looking for some sells on the dollar index, right? Ever since this weekly candle on November 12th. Um, so technically that didn't close until the end of this week. So about a month and a half, um, I've been bearish on the dollar index. Now, not necessarily trading a weaker dollar. There have been a couple trades here and there. We caught a buy on AUD USD, but a lot of that had to do with AUD strength, but still that was kind of like buying into um, the US dollar weakness. But uh, we, I guess just the point I'm trying to make is that we have not seen enough weakness on the dollar index for me to be convinced that it's still moving lower, okay? And right now, I'm just gonna be completely honest, I am on a neutral bias with the dollar index. And the reason why is because we haven't found downside since this bearish candle on November 12th or at the end of this week. And we haven't seen really much upside either. And if we break this down onto the daily, we can see. So this is back on, here's, this is the week of November 12th. So this is actually November 12th right here. You can see when that week opened. And then the close of that week um, on, let's see. Let's see, so 12, one, two, three, four, five. So right here, um, between, let me get, back, get out my little pen for you guys. So this was the bearish week that we changed our bias on the dollar index, right? If those of you guys that are a student and in the group, you guys know, or even if you just go and look at my results for the month of November, you'll see the trades that we took. Um, we had taken a buy on your, um, well, a buy on the dollar. So we took a sell on Euro USD, caught about, caught this entire daily candle. Um, I called this in the group. If you scroll back in Telegram and even on the weekly outlooks, I called this, that this was a fake out for the dollar index. And sure enough, we did start to see some downside. Now we did not end up breaking this level, right? We did not end up breaking this zone. We ended up bouncing off of this zone, going back up and retesting the highs, consolidating for a while, coming back and retesting the lows, going back up and retesting the highs. And that's where we've been, right? We haven't had any clear direction on the dollar index since. Um, now, another thing to keep in mind is last week we did see the Fed raise interest rates. So to back to just back up just a moment to last Wednesday, we saw, well, I guess it was, sorry, it was Wednesday, Thursday. Um, sorry, I, I was in Thailand last week, guys, so the economic calendar has been switching back and forth. Let me actually just go ahead and match automatically. Save these settings. Go to the calendar. Boom. So you can see, let's go to last week. And there we go. We can see. Okay, so Wednesday. Um, so this is my time right now in Los Angeles. So Wednesday, we saw the, uh, the Fed raise interest rates 25 basis points. So it went from between two and two and a, two and a quarter to two and a quarter and two and a half percent. Um, now that generally means good things for the US dollar. However, big thing that I just kind of want to discuss besides the charts also is emerging markets. If you guys are not familiar with what emerging markets are, it's basically markets or economies that um, are not like fully developed economies yet. And it doesn't necessarily mean like super poor countries, okay? It does include a lot of poorer countries, including like, um, let's see, like Thailand, India, South Africa, things like that. But it also includes, you know, very wealthy economies like uh, China and Russia are very large, I guess not necessarily um, wealthy economies, but what I mean is large countries, okay? So don't think it's just like a bunch of little tiny countries because Russia is very large. China is very, very large. Um, there's, I mean, I, I, I could sit here and list a bunch of emerging market economies or a, a bunch of countries that fall under the category of emerging markets, but... Um, the point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, the whole reason why this, the dollar index would go up, right? Just to give you, I mean, just to be very clear and to understand like the psychological epitome of the markets of why they move up and why they move down, right? The only reason the dollar index would keep going up is because commercial traders and institutional traders and banks, the people that actually buy, that, that people that actually move the market would be buying the dollar, Right. And likewise, the vice versa to the downside, right? The only reason the dollar index would move down 
is because people are selling the dollar, right? Or are selling their positions on the dollar. And I believe that it is possible that throughout 2019, that investors could be seeking out uh, better returns in economies like emerging markets. So we could see money taken out of the dollar and put into other um, markets. And that would obviously create weakening of the dollar index. So which would in turn create, you know, buying pressure for your USD and, you know, a lot, a lot of other reactions across the board. Right. But um, we're just looking at the dollar index right now. So I hope I haven't lost you guys. I know I'm like going in a lot of different directions, talking about a lot of different things. Um, for those of you guys that are paying attention and things that are making sense, I mean, it, it should be making, a, making sense, right? If you're paying attention and you're actively engaged in what I'm saying and you're actively engaged in the markets and your own education and learning, then everything I'm saying right now should make a lot of sense, right? If what I'm saying right now is like a second language to you and you have no idea what I'm saying and emerging marketing, the emergent, emerging markets this and government shutdown that and federal funds rate this and interest rate that well like you just need to do some self-education right and i know that there's a lot of education out there on the internet there's a million things right you could spend you could find a hundred hours of education just on interest rate hikes or just you know when interest rate hikes are you know you only really need to spend a couple minutes really understanding what they are um, or, you know, maybe more than a couple of minutes, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. There's, there's a lot of like over information that you don't necessarily need. So that's also one thing that I think my course is really good at is, um, I don't think I'm going like too in depth on things or, or like going over this, the same thing in too many ways. I think I'm just giving you what you need to hear. So, um, not to plug my course in too much, but you know, it is, it is something that is, uh, I think some very valuable information to some of you guys that are looking for some direction in the market because pretty much everything that I talk about on these webinars and not pretty much, yes, everything that I go over on these webinars and everything that I'm talking about is going to be included, um, in the course. Um, but yeah, with the dollar index, I, I think that, um, emerging markets could be a threat to the dollar strength is, is pretty much in short what I'm trying to say. So I'm neutral as of right now, right? Um, there's just some very key things to look at, right? And, and to be honest, this, I'll, I'll show you the key things that I'm looking at. The first thing from a technical standpoint, which obviously would have some fundamental backing to it if we see um, the dollar continue to strengthen, would be this inverted head and shoulders that we see on the dollar index, right? This neckline that I know everybody's been looking at for weeks and weeks and weeks now where we've just consolidated under and it has proven to be a significant level of resistance right? Um, if we do end up seeing this neckline broken, then there is a good chance that we're going to see the dollar index continue sh to strengthen to at least like the 100.50 or the 100.63 zone where this upper blue level is. And to the downside, if we end up seeing more so, you can see this on the daily. If we really start to see this series of higher lows that we've been making um, over the past six months, broken and we start to see some lower lows and lower highs made, then we're going to start to see a sell off on the dollar index down to 93.2. Um, but you guys know that 100.63 and 93.2 has been, or pretty much the 100.50 area and the 93.2 area has been major zones for us. We've been talking about this, especially if you've been in pause, you've been following positive traders for the past couple of years now. Um, you'll know that these have been two significant levels um, to the upside and the downside on the dollar index when prices either below or above it. So just something key to watch out. But in short, if you're here looking for a free trade, there's no free trades. I'm just giving you my bias. And I think that this is honestly more val what I'm going over right now is much more valuable than one free trade. Um, but watch the dollar index. I have a neutral standpoint on it, so I'm not really interested in trading it right now. I'm definitely going to wait until the new year hits and liquidity starts to enter into the market, but that's that. Um, gold, I do have to toot my own horn for a, for a little bit here, guys, just because I've been talking about gold going to 1265 for some time. And if you don't believe me, even if you're not a student that's been watching my, that's a part of my daily webinars that I do four times a week. If you're just on my weekly outlook that I do for free on my YouTube channel, go watch literally every single, you can watch any of my webinars for the past two months, at least any of my weekly outlooks for the past two months, at least. And you'll hear me mention gold to 1265 
um, somewhere in there multiple times. Okay. I've been calling gold to 12 to 65 for some time. Um, for a while, we weren't sure if we were going to see it a couple weeks ago and when we bounced off of 1250, but we ended up going up there. Um, we're very close to that level. And from here, we'll see what happens. And it is possible, right? That gold could continue to go, you know, especially if we're talking about, um, the, uh, a selling on the dollar, right? And especially if you guys don't know, there's a lot of news about Brexit right now. There's a lot of negative news with Brexit. There's a lot of negative news with Italy and Europe and a lot of, of the countries that are a part of the European Union under the control of the, of the ECB, European Central Bank. Um, also China and Japan is under a lot of flack right now. So there's a lot of markets that are getting a lot of like bad PR, if you will. And uh, that's making gold look pretty appetizing. So it's a good possibility that 1265, it's, it's not just going to stop and reverse at 1265. In my opinion, I think we could see um, gold continue higher. So that's my opinion on gold, but really kind of want to look at some of these things. So Euro USD, um, I, I'm obviously neutral on Euro USD because if I'm neutral on the dollar index, I have to be neutral on Euro USD, right? They're a direct opposite correlation of each other. So it wouldn't make sense to say, you know, I'm neutral on the dollar index, but then I'm bearish on Euro USD, right? If I'm bearish on Euro USD, then I'm obviously bullish on the dollar index or vice versa. So because I'm bearish on, I'm because I'm neutral on the dollar index, I'm also neutral on Euro USD. But again, just some key levels to watch on Euro USD is the 100.15, I'm sorry, the 1.15 area on Euro USD. If the bulls can really bring price back above 100, I don't know why I keep saying 100. If Euro USD, if the bulls can bring price back above 115 on Euro USD, expect a bit of a rally on Euro USD. We'll probably head up towards the 118, 119, 120 area. So that should offer a nice like three to 500 pip uh, trade on Euro USD. Now, uh, to the opposite, if we see the yearly lows broken, if we continue to see the dollar index rally, more than likely, um, and then we, were gonna, we would obviously see Euro USD really find some new ground below 113, then we're probably going to see a couple hundred pips to the downside as well. And that dollar index um, continue to rise towards 100.5, uh, which will 100.50, which will, uh, uh, you know, imminently inversely bring Euro USD down. Okay. Um, another thing that I'm interested in looking at is USD CAD. Uh, USD CAD is continuing to move up higher. If you guys are wondering why this random number at 100 or one, I don't know why I keep saying 100 at 1.3580 is marked off uh, with this, with this liner. Is that where, where, where is this line at? I don't know why it's okay. So it's, it's 135.77. For some reason, the tag, I think it's just because of all the different things. I have the countdown timer right here. So this, this line right here is 135.77. So even though 135.77 looks lower, it's actually where that line is at. And if you guys have been following along, right, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the weekly outlooks, but definitely with my students, that every rally that we've seen this year, um, or actually even at the end of last year on USD CAD, was about 800, 800 pips, right? You measure this, about 800 pips. You measure this, about 800 pips. You measure this, about 800 pips. Okay, so we actually measured from the bottom here and we went up about 800 pips. And in this range, this, was, this wasn't like a, a to the dot number, it was just an in area, a zone where we were expecting USD CAD to rally towards um, if it broke um, our 134 target originally. And it did, so it rallied about another 150, 180 pips higher than our original target. And um, it's really moved up higher, right? It's, it's definitely moved up higher. It's definitely broken this channel that we were, were in from uh, the beginning of October to about, you know, just a couple days ago, literally, like the December 20th is when we got to the top of this channel and then we broke up on Friday of last week and now we've broken out. So there is a chance that this pair could rally higher. Um, obviously, this has a major correlation to the dollar index, right? If we continue to see the dollar index rally, then that's going to be a good, um, good conviction for this to rally as well. But big thing, big catalyst for USD CAD has been oil, right? And let's look at oil for a second. Oil is pretty crazy, right? We have not seen a drop in oil like this since 2000, um, like 
uh, late 2014. So kind of the same time. Look at this. Actually, October 2014 is when we started to see this massive drop in oil that lasted like a little bit more than three months. But the biggest decline was over a three-month period. And same thing. Beginning of October, we started to see a decline in oil. And we've dropped. And if you actually look, it's almost been a 50% drop since the highs. Right? You look at that. 41% devaluation in, in oil or decrease in the value of oil. And if you guys are wondering what this is, that, that's a price, that, that's the cost of one barrel of oil, right? Um, and I believe the oil is measured in, it's a 50 gallon barrel, okay? So if you think about that, like what the markup is, right? It's like 50, 50 it's like $45 for 50 gallons of oil right? So less than a dollar per gallon. And then, you know, you have that markup at the price pump, right? If you live in California, I actually haven't even filled up yet in California since I've been back, but I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere around $3 per gallon, right? And if you're in other parts of the country, you're probably paying no less than a $1.50 or somewhere around that range for a gallon. And you can see like oil companies, they can get $50 like Exxon or Shell or whatever, you know, they're paying. Of course, there's probably a small markup on this and that, you know, we're talking, we're talking like, you know, small numbers here, but they're, they're probably paying less than a dollar per gallon. So, you know, that that's where they make, make their money on the markup on that side of things. So that's a whole nother discussion. But the whole point I'm just trying to make is that oil has been dropping so that creates weakness in the Canadian dollar because if you guys don't know, and I've said this about a million times if you follow me, something you, that you need to know, I mean, and it, even if you don't follow me, you just need to know in general because it, it relates to the Canadian dollar um, with everything. With, well, if you're, if you're planning on trading the Canadian dollar, which is a major, which I'm assuming you are if you trade Forex, you need to know that Canada's economy heavily, heavily revolves around oil, right? Because it's, they just do, right? They're a big manu importer and exporter of oil and man uh, manufacturer of oil. You guys know like the pipelines and all the, the oil companies that are in Canada. So obviously when oil goes down, the Canadian dollar is going to decrease. Um, so we've seen um, CAD uh, really fall and we've seen uh, that in turn is obviously what translates into on the charts USD CAD rising. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in this area, right? Oil is going to be a major, major influence of what direction uh, USD CAD takes in 2019. But um, I just, am, I am watching this pair. I am watching it how high it is. If, and I guess what I'm just trying to say here is if we do see some start to see some demand for oil, if we do start to see that that demand pick up for oil, then we're going to see USD CAD uh, drop. Now I'm still neutral, right? Until next year, I'm neutral on everything. I'm not interested in trading. And the last pair that I just kind of want to look at is USD Singapore dollar. Um, it's been finding cons some consolidation for a while. It's been overbought for a while now. Um, I had some trend lines on here previously. They're kind of irrelevant at this point now. I'm just kind of looking at raw price action. And overall, it really just depends on what happens with the U.S. dollar as well. If we see the U.S. dollar continue to rally, then we're going to see this pair rally because the dollar is just going to drag this exchange rate up on a stronger U.S. dollar. But if we do see the dollar um, decrease or the dollar index go down and decrease, then we will see um, this exchange rate decrease as well in, in relationship to a weak US dollar. So, oh, so much talking guys, but that's like, that's literally all I've got for you guys today. Um, again, for those of you guys looking for a handout, you aren't going to find a lot of value on here, right? For the, but for those of you guys that are here for the education and what you really should be here for, which is like learning and exceeding, expanding your knowledge and growing, this can be one of the most valuable webinars you can watch, right? We go over a lot of different things. I explain my whys and um, I break down a lot of things for you. Like I, you guys have to understand that I try, I'm just trying to condense the information that I have in my, in my brain that's running a million miles an hour as fast as possible or as quickly and conveniently as possible in this short amount of time that I can spend with you. I could literally talk for 10 hours straight about one pair. Like literally I could, I could sit and break down Euro USD for like eight hours and go into every little detail about it and 
go and look at every little fundamental thing that's effect, that that's affecting that pair. But you guys know that I can't do that, right? So um, I apologize that if I'm all over the place also goes back to my, me and my human, ma my human nature um, and who I am as a person. I'm very, a very quick person. I obviously have some form of ADD. So um, my brain goes all over the place. I'm always thinking about a million things, but hopefully it's not too distracting for you guys. Hopefully you're still able to follow along. But other than that, I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your guys' holidays. Uh, there will be a weekly outlook next week on the 30th as well, or most likely there will be, even though I'm still not interested in trading at least just to keep the momentum flowing and to keep, um, you know, you guys on track and be able to answer any questions you guys has ha have. Um, Again, I'm I apologize that the stream uh, that I wasn't able to live stream this today. But if you are watching the re recording, I do appreciate you. And if you got this far, guys, please leave a comment with what you've learned today. Um, if you get that far and you leave a comment, then I know that you're actually listening to me, and I know that you get some value out of this. M most importantly, too, like make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future ones. And please click the like button for this video. It really does mean a lot, guys, because. Like I know to you, maybe, you know, some, maybe a like doesn't mean a whole lot, but for me, it really does. You know, when I see my videos get like 20, 30 likes, it means a lot to me. It means that like, I know that what I'm putting out there is valuable and that you guys are receiving this knowledge well. Right. But when I only, when, so it, it does mean a lot. That's just the point I'm trying to make that don't think that, Oh, just me clicking one like it or thinking, Oh, somebody else will click the like, like guys, I watch YouTube too. Okay. I know how it is. Um, and I know I've had those thoughts go through my head before too, watching a YouTube channel and being and somebody asking for a like and, be, and me liking what they're doing, but just for whatever reason, not liking their stuff because I, I don't even know why, but you know, now that I look back at it, it's like, okay, one like really does actually mean a lot and it does mean the difference, you know, maybe not to a channel that has hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but as of this time, I have 1200 subscribers, right? It's not a ton. So every like really does matter. And it shows that you guys care. And it shows that the information that you guys like this information, it motivates me to do more videos like this. You know, I, when I was in Thailand, I went out and spent over $3,000 on a whole camera setup, you know, buying a professional DSLR camera. That way I can make some good content for you guys. Granted the past month, I've been extremely busy finishing up my journey in Thailand. And now I'm getting settled back in the U S and uh, relocating from California to Arizona and getting and getting the course done. So I haven't had as much time to make as much content as I'd like the past month, but um, trust me guys, 2019 is going to be a very big year for us. Tons of content, tons of high quality videos, nothing but just val more. I mean, I, I feel like I gave, I give out so much value already, but I really want to find a way to 10 X that value that I give you guys, because really I'm not going to be doing much as much traveling as I have the past year and a half, um, in this upcoming year. So it's going to be a lot of time dedicated to, um, making valuable content for, um, the world to see. So I hope you guys can be a part of that. Um, you know, let me know your goals below. That's what I'd love for you guys to do. Write your comments down, write what your goals are. Let me know what, and your trading goals is what I mean. You know, let me know your trading goals. You know, if, if your if your goal is your goal to, you know, make a MyFX book and your, you know, to track your progress or is your goal to have your first profitable year is your goal to, you know, double what you did this year. You know, what, what are your goals? You know, are you setting yourself a monthly goal? Are you setting yourself a yearly goal? Are you setting yourself a quarterly goal? What are you, what are you doing to better yourself? Um, you know, at the end of this year to prepare for 2019. So I challenge you guys to answer that question below, but, um, other than that, I'm not going to drag this on any further. I hope you guys all have a great, um, week. Uh, I, I was going to say a great week trading, but I don't, I don't recommend any of you guys trading. Just, I hope you guys all have a great week. Get to spend some time with the holiday with your family for the holidays. And I'm really excited to see you guys in 2019. So take care guys and see you guys next time.